man, they could be anywhere in there. Any creek chubs in there? Hey, creek chubs. Hey, buddy, is there creek chubs down there? Oh, yeah, there's creek chubs down there. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. You don't have to be that guy. Creek chubs are everywhere. And I'm going to take this time off, uh, friends, and uh, show you what equipment that I use. I mean, it's basic equipment, easy, easy equipment, nothing fancy. Um, you can use your junk rods um, to get after these uh, creek chubs, these fish. But uh, as soon as I'm done here, we're going to um, get on with the video onto the creeks that uh, that will be catching uh, uh, places, a good place to catch these creek chubs. But first, let's uh, start off with the cane pole. This is probably, you've probably seen this in a lot of my videos. Um, the cane pool is what I use majority to get these uh, fish. Now, I don't use the hole. It depends on the on the, the length or the width of the creek or the pool that, uh, that I'm fishing into. Um, I'll use this length, but I like to take just part of this and set this down. I just like to use just part of the, of the cane pool. It's easy. It's a simple little part of the stick. Of course, that's the part where all the string and everything's attached to it. Um, number six, Aberdeen hook with a long shank, small bobber, a little bit of weight if there's any current at all to keep the bait down on the water. But that's all I use just to get these uh, get these creek chubs. Um, another thing is spin casting reel. This is one of my old, old reels uh, that were handed down um, from my wife's grandpa. Um, he uh, used this a lot for, he was a big pan fisherman. Uh, well, I use this uh, for pan fishing for bait as well, but I use it mostly for creek chubs. I use a lot, of, I use, I mean, I, whatever's available, like I said, I use the cane pole a lot more when I actually use the spin casting reel. But these are fun to catch. When I use an ultra light, um, anywhere from a two, four pound line. I like to use just a little heavier line because in case you get it snagged and because a lot of those creeks have a lot of wood in it, um, a lot of debris. So when you get it snagged, you can get it undone without breaking the line. But yeah, this is a really fun, fun uh, pull and reel to use. Um, another one, we'll move this video right along here. So. Now I just bought this, this little dock runner, ugly stick. Um, I haven't used this yet. It's been in the back of my Jeep for about three weeks now. And uh, so I thought, well, I'm gonna share it with you all because that's what I'm gonna use it for. I'm gonna use it for creek chugs. Um, the length of this, this pole is 36 inches long. So it's not, so from here to the, end of the handle so even from here to here it's probably only 30 inches long but it's a short little pull it's a lot of flexibility so it'd make it still make it fun um, to go after these creep chubs that's what you want you want a, a pole that's really light um, ultra light that make it more fun and you can catch these creep chubs on big poles i mean you can if you want but it'll take a lot of fun out of it you gotta get use these small poles and you'll have a lot more fun catching them but this i'm gonna try this it's ugly stick dock runner uh, reason for this pole, that'd be easy to get. Casting under uh, overhanging branches, trees, and debris. This would be a lot easier to get out into those creeks too when there's little um, crannies and stuff that you want to really want to cast into instead of a you know a five or seven, anywhere from seven foot length um, rod. So this would be perfect. It's only uh, 15 bucks at Walmart or any other department store. I'm not sure what the other department stores you know charge for this type of pole, but that's all I paid for it at Walmart. Now we got the poles down. Let's talk a little bit about the hooks. Now, the hooks, this is what I use. I use the number six number six hook. There's a 10 that comes in the Eagle Claw, an Aberdeen hook. Um, you can use the number eight. It's just a little um, little small. I find that they're a little smaller. Uh, but I like the hooks just a little bigger. Like the number six is perfect because it keeps a lot of the smaller um, creek chubs off my hook. When they're up there biting on it, sometimes you catch them anyway. But what happens most of the time, the smaller creek chubs are three inches, you know, maybe even a couple inches long. I've caught them even a couple inches long, and uh, they'll actually come off, they'll actually bounce off this hook. You know, the mouths, of course, are too small. And so this hook, this this size here is perfect for creek chubs because you get a lot, a lot of the bigger ones that you're after. So the number six with a long shank on it. I like the long shank on it uh, for one reason why, because uh, when you don't want these, you don't want these fish to swallow your hook. And with this, with uh, this having a long shank on it, you can get in there with your fingers and pull it out without actually harming them. If you get a small shank hook, what's going to happen? They're going to swallow them, and you have to get your pliers in there. And you're going to hurt uh, hurting these fish. And these fish are very sensitive. You can hurt them real easy, and they, they die real easy. So bobbers, got that down. Real small bobbers. 
These are really small little bobbers. This one here's got a little weight on it. I like the one with the weight on it, so you don't have to add the extra weight. Just throw it out, depending on the current. Um, we got a little wind out here. Real small little bobbers. You don't need nothing big. I've used big, I've used big bass or um, uh, bobbers, like catfish bobbers already, and to try to catch them. But this will indicate better for a catch when they take it under the water. You can set the hook, and you don't need to set the hook real hard. But anyway, the small little bobbers like this, you can use uh, uh, straight bobbers, and the round bobbers are probably the best. So I like these bobbers here. Let's go with bait. I've caught. I've caught creek chubs multiple things, bread, corn. You can catch these creek chubs on about anything. Um, I even caught them on uh, crappie bites. You can catch them on crappie bites. Um, when crappie season is pretty much over, um, well, to me it's over. Most, most crappie fishermen will fish all summer long, but a lot of times you have to get out on a boat for that. Most of the time you do. But my crappie fish is over in the spring, and when I have what I have left over, I use it for uh, creek chubs. And they'll bite on these. Just put maybe one on the hook, that's all you need. And you know, you, sometimes you can catch three or four before you lose the bait off the hook. Uh, worms, just use red worms, red wigglers. Um, if you use a worm, you pull one out of there. Now you touch the dirty one. If you use a worm, just use a pinch of it. Just a little pinch right there I got, right above my fingers. Just a small pinch of it. Uh, you can have a, a one whole, a whole worm will probably last you. You can, depends on how many you ca uh, catch, you can probably catch five or six creek, uh, creek chubs off of one uh, piece of worm, or the whole worm, I should say, one whole worm. Now, what's next? We got this. This is very, very important. Now, especially on a hot day, um, you want an insulated bucket. Uh, you definitely want an insulated bucket, and you want an aerator. These fish are, these fish are uh, very sensitive, and when it's hot, you want to keep some water in there. Uh, uh, water from their uh, their creek for now, but if you can bring your own water, it's fine too. But I, what I like to do is take the water from the creek that I uh, caught them out of, take it home and just drain it. And I put I just put fresh well water in it. Works just fine. Make sure it's cold, nice and cold, and make sure you got the uh, aerator on. I don't have batteries in this. My battery died a couple of days ago. I put fresh batteries in it. Just get an insulated bucket. it will keep them alive a long time. Okay, well, I think that's about it. Um, Boy, this, this is fun making this video. Uh, it took me a week and a half to make it. Uh, you're going to see probably me wearing different apparel and stuff in this video because it's been chopped up. Um, I, my first part of the video, I went out to look for creeks that you shouldn't fish in and uh, some of those creeks that you just try to avoid. And then it, I was going to go out and do the same, uh, finish up the video, but we had a huge rainstorm that filled up the creeks and I had to wait till the water goes back down. So that's kind of why I you, you got, uh, got myself all different, uh, different parts of the video looking different it's like hey right, he's, he's like wearing clothes in each uh, part of the video <laughs> well that's why um, i'm out here in kingston park here to find some high i'm planning on doing some um uh, channel cat fishing here but watch the rest of this video i hope you get a lot out of it check it check it out all right y'all we are here at our first bridge first creek let's go check it out I've been wanting to record as I was driving up to this bridge. The sun was shining right on the camera, so. It's sounding good, we're hearing water. I'm gonna tighten up my camera here, the camera's a little shaky. Right on the top of the bridge right now, that's what it looks like. Yeah, that looks really good here, guys. Friends, I should say. Uh, we've got running water. Uh, there's a pool right there. It's a little shallow. Potential for um, fish there, creek chubs. But I'm really liking it right over there with all them. It's got that log, kind of some like a log jam there. Uh, creek chubs love to hide in that. And I see there's a lot of shadow of the trees and, and uh, branches hanging over. Um, these creek chubs love to be shadowed in. Um, under bridges, over uh, vegetation, trees, branches such as that that'd be my spot to check first right over there that'd be a great place for peach chubs let's check on this side oh yeah look at this yeah look at that look at the running water here beautiful running water oxygenate the water but i'm loving that pool of water right there look at that i love the hammock looking pools of water where they actually get really big 
um, or just a big round pool of water and they turn into a small stream to the end, just like a hammock. As you look at a hammock, how did you lay in a hammock, it spreads right out like that, real wide, and then it just gets narrowed towards the end right here. We're gonna go right down here. We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time down, uh, down in these creeks as I find them. We're gonna go down and just see if there's some creek chubs in here, which I'm, I'm 100% sure they are, if they're not fished out. Let's get, it, let's get baited up. Let's head down here with my GoPro and see if we've got any creek chubs down here. Let's go, I'm excited. All right, here we are. I'm gonna use the uh, 10 foot cane pole, uh, ba baboon stick, and uh, we're gonna see if we get them in there. There's some splashing going in there, look at that. Um, we got a little red wiggler on the tip. I should have worn my boots, as you can see. If you notice how wet my pants are, I must get my boots next time. <laughs> I walked across right here, so. You know, you're a creek shot uh, fishing. Uh, make sure you wear boots. You're probably going to need them. Well, let's see if they're in here. It's a really good pool right here for them. Look at that. That was a bite already. That was quick. There we go. Those are some little ones there. Oh, they're loaded in there. Yeah, they're loaded in there. Those are some little ones there. They're not getting hooked up. Yeah, they're not getting hooked up. They're small ones. Right over there, if I'm pointing right, uh, right, right on the on the bank there, right on the edge, I'd be good. There's some slack water there. There might be some big ones lurking right there. There you go. Look at that. We got creek chubs in here, friends. <laughs> Look at that. We got creek chubs. That nice. I get that out of the tree there. There you go. Nice. That is awesome. Here, little buddy. Glad I found you. We got creek chubs. There we go. Throw you back in. You get spooked. So you want to catch as many as you can as you're trying to fish for them. Because they do get shy and spooked after, after a while. And, and the bite will get really slow. You on the other side here. That side, I probably should have my boots on. That actually might be deep. Let's see what it looks like first. That should be all right. I'm gonna have to get my boots wet a little bit. I wanted to get a get a casting reel here, spin spin casting reel or, or something here because I can cast out farther. Boy, this is awesome! Look at that. This is quite a creek. I have to remember this creek for bait. I get too excited here. I'm gonna slip. All right. There's some shallows here. I'll fall in. That's what we're looking at right here, guys. Friends. <laughs> I made it. Even though I was in a foot of water, I made it. I a tree cut down here. I think you did some road work. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, this is precious. This is precious. Look at the pool here. Hammock looking pool. Narrows out right here. Beautiful spot for... I won't be able to cast out too far with this, this pole here. Get a little ways, but not too far. But it's like I said, we're gonna get a couple creek chubs. That's good to know that we, they're in here. Right. Let's cast right here for a second. Oh, look at that. Bite already. Bite already. Bite already. Is that a creek chub? Oh, yeah. That's a creek chub. We got one. 
<laughs> That's a beautiful tree chub. About four inches. That hook's a little bit, just about too big for you. There you go. Look in the camera, don't be shy. Got a little bitty worm on there. That should just be enough for a creek chub. Let's put it over there for a second, see what's over there. Oh, took it down real quick. Yeah, they're, they're loaded in here. They're packed in here. Come on now, get on that hook. The smaller ones are a little harder to hook. Then we get a, like a piece of the worm. Now you can go a, a smaller, real small hook if you want to. But make sure you got a long shank on it. That we can get it out of their mouth. Boy, it's a lot of fun. Hope all your friends can see that. Well, that was a little one. I've seen that one How about a couple inches. There we go. There we go. Nice. All right. Oh, well, we know there's creek tubs in here. Let's go to another creek. Stop to another creek. creek. Here you see. So we're going to go down and check that out. See if there's another potential area for creek tubs. I'll Google map this one. Well, it's a lot of fun finding these. So hopefully, we gotta be careful on this road. This is a state road, so a little busy here. Let's see what this looks like down here. I say you have to check your uh, your county, your state regulations, and make sure if you even allow the fish under bridges. I mean, some some states are different. I'm not sure. I haven't really checked on it. Let's see whether if some states are different different when it comes to fishing uh, under bridges. Well, that's pretty shallow. We get under and check that out though. It looks pretty good. I mean, it is really shallow. I'm not sure if this is going to be a good creek to fish in or not. Now we're going to spend just like, a, like I said a short time in these creeks. I don't want to spend a whole time with video um, fishing for these creek chubs. Okay, it looks like it's very, it's very shallow all the way through here. I got my glasses on so I can see, I should see some movement down here. But if you would look, I'll show you over here. It's not a bad, it's not a bad creek at all for these fish. Now right there, you find something like that with the trees overhangs, like I said, they like shadows. They like to be shadowed over, something shadowed over the water and they would more or less uh, congregate there. We got a groundhog over there. Check that out over there. See it? Well, Mr. Chuck over there watching me. But yeah, that'd be a perfect place for creek chubs over there. We may throw our bobber over there, bait over there. And I'm looking at this side. I think it's even better. Because I know my video is just, it's already pretty long. I, mean, I don't want to make it so long where dragging you guys out and you want to know where these creek chubs are and how to fish for them let's get baited up now this side here looks really good yeah it's, it's really good here it's, it looks deep there may be some creek chubs in there I'm pretty sure there is yeah it turns into a nice pool right there of water okay let's get baited up I got my spin casting reel here ultralight spin casting reel We'll get this uh, tangled here. I'm over here. Hey, there's food over here. It's moving around. Are we getting close to them? It's real shady right there where it's at. That's a good place for creek jobs right there. It's going right in there too. It's right where I want it. There we go. And we got one. Right there's where I want it. That's where they're hiding. 
beautiful place for a creek shot right there. Okay, well, this is it. Let's go back to, let's go to the next uh, location that I found on Google Map. It's a trib, trib uh, off of, tributary off of Maumee River. And uh, let's go and check that one out. Whoop. Pop that off there. But I'd like to see if I can get around here and show you that spot, but I don't think I'll be able to. But yeah, there's a hole right there. And as you go over there, there's a whole bunch of brush right there. And it's, I, know, I know there was a bunch of creature hubs there. Perfect place. It's really dark there. So I know it's deep there for them to hide in. So, all right, let's go to the next location. All right, here we are. We're in another spot. I, I Google mapped this one and uh, it, it looks pretty good uh, on Google map, but we'll see, see what it looks like in person. Now this is a ditch, like I showed you earlier, one of the ditches on the side of the road. This, this runs all on the side of the road. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, friends, this looks good, 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 good. Look at that, look at that. Got some more running water. Excuse me, I like that. Got a pool right there. Um, it's not bad. I mean, hold some fish. Let's get on this side. Oh, <laughs> that's even better. We got running water. Look at that. There's that hammock looking pool of water. Kind of springs off, narrows out, narrows out here. Got that little pool right there. It's deep right there. I can guarantee you there's probably creek chubs in there. Let's get down there and fish and see if there's something in there. Oh. Look at that worm. We got a worm on the line here. That's what they're biting on. They're not biting on the hook. Where I want them to. There's a piece of worm that's slid up on the line. Yeah, they come off the hook easy. They don't take much. There's one. Oh yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. There you go. That's a nice creek chub right there. Make some fine bait. Make some fine bait. Well, I've been hollering, going places, yelling for creek chubs. I'm really glad I found them. That's a creek chub right there. That's a pretty creek chub. Whoa. Hey there, buddy. Now, they're very sensitive. You don't take much to, to hurt them, to kill them. So you really gotta take, take some special care with, with them. They get stressed really easy. And what I'm using here is a small Aberdeen hook. I'm just using a J-hook. That's all I'm using, just a straight J-hook. Now, I'm using a hook with a, a long shank on it, so that way it'll be easier to get it out of their mouth. If you use a small, small itty-bitty hook, they'll end up swallowing it. You're gonna end up get, have to get pliers, you have to yank it out of their mouth, and then more likely you're gonna maybe hurt them and kill them. So you use a hook, a real small Aberdeen hook, or any kind of type of hook, just a straight J-hook with a long shank on it, and you'll be able to get it out. Because most, more likely when they swallow the hook, some part of this hook's gonna stick out. You'll be able to pull it out with your fingertips. I'm just using red wigglers, and I'm just using like half of one. I'm not using anything big. Just using a real small part of the worm. Just taking my fingers and just pinching it. My fingers are just pinching it off. Just a small little piece of the worm. <clears throat> I'm glad I found them. All right. Here we go. Hopefully, I've spooked them enough for I'm catching to. It happens a lot of times. The fish is spot enough. 
you fish the spot enough, you end up spooking them. And so it's kind of like just lock jaw and don't want to bite anymore. Beautiful evening. It was a beautiful evening. Oh, that was a nice one. That was a nice one. There you go. Oh, yeah! <laughs> There's your Goliath. There's your Goliath. That's a big cheat. <laughs> Look at that. Big Creek Chub. That's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. Oh, you're a pretty fish. You are a pretty, pretty, pretty fish. Look at that. Now that is a nice creek chub. It's well eight inches. Now males can get anywhere from 10 to 12 inches. Females can reach seven to eight inches. And they can weigh up as 12 ounces. So that's a good size creek chub. I'm not sure about state records and all that. I'm not sure if they use rough fish or gauge rough fish, any kind of like record keeping. They should, I think it'd be kind of cool. I have not really looked up on it with any of the stats on that. Do they uh, keep uh, rough fish for any kind of record keeping of size issues? I'm really glad I found this creek. It took, uh, it took somebody, oops, it took somebody to be down here to make it a lot easier to find creek chubs. <laughs> As you see, I yelled down and made creek chubs down here. That was pretty cool. Now, one thing a lot of people don't want to do is give up not only their catfishing spots or so-called honey holes that people call home, um, they don't like to give those up. And a lot of fishermen don't like to give up their bait holding areas. Like this, this is a good baity holding area. This is an excellent creek chub. I'm finding this creek chub pool of water. As you can see, this pool of water. I'm gonna show you on a little later before it gets really dark uh, from the bridge. But this is a nice pool of water. We got running water, which I'll show you later into this pool of water. So it's just perfect holding tank, you want to say, for creek chubs. Perfect place. Got, uh, got shade. Yeah, we got shade. Um, uh, they love to be in shadows. Anything, creek chubs are good about hiding in shadows of overhanging grass, bridges. Those are the first places to cast for creek chubs. Um, but not only that, I caught them in the middle of 95 degree hot weather. The hottest weather it can be, I still caught them. So, creek chubs are very, I mean, they're available everywhere. They're every, everywhere in the United States. But it's just a matter of putting some gas in your tank and a little bit of time, and a, little bit of, a little bit of research. Or research. You can find it. You'll find the creek chub. Like I was telling uh, or saying to uh, Tyler Smith that was down here, you know. Oh, look at that! I thought I had a sunfish the way it was wiggling around. I got a little old bullhead, feisty little bullhead. You know, any bullheads in here? Now, googling this creek, I'll put it on the bottom of this uh, description of my, my, my this video and I'll let you know the name of this creek because I'm not sure what I did know at one time but I'm not sure you wiggle yourself out of it. He swallowed this right, on, it's right in his bone there. 
can get it out of there without getting poked by his spines. I'm in water there. But uh, there you go. But like I said, I don't know the name of this ditch or this creek. A lot of times these creeks are called ditches too. A ditch or creek. Same thing. But finding this creek. Oh boy, is he gonna start biting? I really don't want you. He could just keep you. You're a pretty good size. Might kill my creek chubs. There we go. You stay off. Hopefully, I'll stop catching those. I'm, I'm here for creek chubs. Those are yellow, uh, yellow bullheads. Boy, they can be feisty. The big ones are, they can be mean. You gotta be careful how you handle them. You don't wanna put your finger in their mouth. Put plant down on your fingers. There's a good one. Look at that. Another good creek chub. <laughs> one thing fun, it's fun to get out there and catfish. It's also fun to, to bait fish. Catching bait for you catfish. Let's see if we catch a couple more. And I'll show you the creek before it gets too dark. Get enough bait for my tank. Get enough bait for my tank. I don't want to fish the spot. Hopefully there'll be some here for other fishermen to come down and get bait. And, and also, if I decide to come down here, I want to get more bait. Got a little one there. Reach out there and see if I get a hold of it. I've got a little bit of worm left on that hook. Not much. A lot of times that's all it takes. There you go. Ah, another one of you guys. I'm not here to catch you, uh, I'm here to catch creek chubs. Not yellow bullheads. These yellow bullheads are probably spooking the creek chubs away. But they got those spines on them. You just gotta be careful. Get, don't get poked by them. Got to bring the pliers down here. Now he's got his mouth clamp. As you can see, he's got his mouth clamp. He's not letting me get the hook out of his mouth. Come on now, you need my hook back. I knew I should have brought my pliers. Hey, there's the hook. Got it. You got it. Get my hook back. Just clamp down on the line. <laughs> there you go. Get out of here. Okay, if it gets too dark, I'm gonna shut you shut this down for now. I'm having too much fun. Way too much fun. I'm gonna show you around a little bit. Show you around a little bit. What we got going on here. Uh, over here, as you can see, we've got a, a decent creek. We've got a great pool of water on this side. Uh, we've got some here. We've got water's, water's running. I mean, you see fine water running like that? And check this out. You know, Tyler Smith honking. Check this out. We've got good running water here, as you can see. I'm hoping I'm not moving this camera too much, making it be annoying here. But it's running right into this pool of water. 
And that's what you want. That's what you want for creek chubs. I'm guessing that's probably could be three feet deep. But this is year long. If it's not overfished, that is. This is a bait tank right here for all summer fishing for creek chubs. And this is what you want. Wow, I'm glad I found this spot. Now there's a bunch of other spots like this. Just gotta drive around, make an effort to find them. And well, that was quite an interesting venture to find creek chubs. Um, <laughs> I tell you, I have a blast finding these creek chubs. They are fun to catch. They're a blast. Bring back some childhood memories. Um, it was my first fish ever I caught. Um, back when I was probably seven, eight years old when I started fishing. Um, what I can remember, I'm um, using a cane pole like I'm using now. So it brings back a lot of childhood memories. And uh, finding this spot really excites me. I can, it's not too far from the house. I'm guessing maybe about uh, five, six miles from the house. But like I said, these creek chubs can be fine. You can find them anywhere and everywhere. Um, now if you go in the rivers, you're gonna have a difficult time to find them. Um, but you find streams, ditches like this. Now this, this ditch here, like I said, I'll put the description on the bottom of the video. What's the name of this ditch? If you're in the area, um, I'm gonna give it away. I give my stuff away. My, my spots, my bait uh, my bait spots, my honey holes. I'll let people know where I caught my big catfish. No, I don't hide nothing. I'm not stingy like, I'm not stingy like that. I'm just, that's who I am. I'll let you know where I caught my catfish. Um, wherever I fish, that is. But this ditch will actually run uh, south here and it'll dry up in a field. But basically all this ditch is, is a runoff from a lot of the fields from the rain. And uh, as you can see, and it goes into uh, the Maumee River. It's a tributary of the Maumee River. So it runs into a major body of water into the Maumee River, which that's another good thing. So if you Google any creeks or ditches, they come off of major waters like uh, rivers, lakes. Um, those are probably the first ones to actually fish because you have fish coming in here during the spring months and when the waters start warming up, uh, especially creek chubs, they'll come up in here to spawn and the males will come in and uh, dance around their gravel pool, make gravel pools, and lay their eggs. And the females will come in and do their thing and and uh, lay the eggs, and the males will uh, spermate them. Uh, so it's a pretty cool thing. As the waters warm up, these fish come in, and all you gotta do is come out here and find these places and throw your line in and catch them. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I love. I love. I'm glad I found this spot. Uh, there's other other places. I mean, there's other ditches, um, maybe not like this. They're just narrow, grassy. You probably won't find any uh, fish in, in those areas. Uh, now, like I said, the first place you want to look for when you look for uh, uh, ditches or creeks is bridges. Uh, they shadow over the water. Uh, creek chubs hide under the shadows. They love shadows. And you notice here even, there's a lot of grass. There's trees right, right here that kind of shadow over the water. It keeps the sun from beating down on the water. It keeps the water cool. And like I said, not always you're gonna find them in the shadow. You're not always you'll find them in the shadow. I, like I said, I found creek chubs in open water when the weather is 95 degrees hot for days and still found them in those, in those types of bodies of water. But, so as I was walking down that way, as you see in the first part of the video, it's very narrow that way, it's very shallow. Wasn't a whole lot of lot going on that way. Wasn't a whole lot of water running that way. It just it was just barely running, uh, but it was very narrow and shallow. But as I got towards the bridge, I found, found this spot, and I'm excited about finding this spot. And not only did I find it, it like, looks like there are a few other people found it too before I did. Um, you know, a young man had come come down here, so I'm thankful I got to meet him and uh, share the gospel with him. So if you're watching this video, young man. I pray that you come to know Jesus like I have because uh, we need him. We all need him. And uh, like I said, this is not just a fishing a video, um, catching multi-species of fish, uh, but it's a fishing video also to catch and hope to bring in souls for the kingdom. As Jesus says, you know, I want to make you fishers of men. And that's what I am, the fishers of men. I'm after to go after souls. Um, that's my top priority on my YouTube channel 
is to share Christ and uh, not only fishing. Now, like, like I told the young man, anybody can fish. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some people a little more skillful, um, but the, like I said, anybody can fish and throw a bobber, a hook and sinker in the water with bait on it and catch a fish if you're on fish. But, um, but at the same time, you need to come to know Jesus. That's where it's at. You need to come to know Jesus. That's my, that's my whole passion of my YouTube channel is to let people know about God. So, well, this is the final part of the video. And uh, I'm glad you all watched, friends, and uh, appreciate you all who subscribe, share, and like. Um, continue to uh, pray for my YouTube channel. Pray for me, for my safety as I go out on the streets and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're new, new in this channel, I just pray, again, please come to know God through, through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, John 3.16 says, just like it's on my hat, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent His Son to show who He really is about. That's what, that's what the whole thing, I mean, God sent His Son on this earth to show God. Because Jesus was God. Jesus is God. And, uh... To show who really God, who's his character and his attributes, attributes, who who he really was and who he is all about on the on the on this earth. So I can't express it enough. I just keep talking about it. I might be beating it up, but that's that's a good beating though. It's a good beating to give people the gospel. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, I've been called worse, <laughs> Bible thumper, all that. I've been called worse, but I tell you, God's desperate for you, just as I'm desperate for you to know God. You know, God says he's a jealous God. He's jealous for you. He wants to know you. So, to end this, end this video, I want to pray right now for you, for the viewers who are watching. And if you come across this video a month down the road, two years down the road, and you come across this video, this prayer is still fresh for you when you watch it. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for life. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and showed us you and brought the, the, the knowledge of love that you have for humankind and brought the caring and the miracles that you want to give us. And not only that, but you gave us hope through the resurrection, through the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ's death. He died on the cross for our sins to forgive us of our sins, to bring us forgiveness, but he also died on, and, and on the third day he rose from the dead. So we have hope from the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear death. You know, we don't have to fear death because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. And we can look to Jesus for life. Trust Christ for life. This prayer is for you. And I hope you come to know God. All right. You see the sun going down, a beautiful background. And uh, I'm so excited for life because I, I have God in my life. You know, before this, my friends, I was not excited. I'm not excited at all. And I'm so thankful that I know God today. I'm um, saved today. You know, I'm not, I don't have no fear of death. But I, I just have fear of people that don't know God. That's the only fear I have left in me. So I'm desperate for you to know God today. All right, this is Two Passions Fishing. Jamie Miller, thanks for watching the Creek Chub.